Welcome everybody. Um, ah. I'm doing another cooking demo. Today I'm going to do butternut squash casserole. So to make things easy, I've uh, pre-cooked my butternut squash and I'll um, have Sean post some pictures of the butternut squash. Basically they're cut up into bite-sized pieces. You can get the ones that are already cut up or you can buy butternut squash yourself. And um, you're going to spread it out on the cookie sheet and you're going to put it in an oven at about 350 degrees. I like to coat it in coconut oil. So I use, um, if I'm using like one large or two medium size, then I'll use about maybe a third or a fourth of a cup of um, coconut oil. I'll put it in the microwave and melt it down. And then I drill it all over the top. I use my tongs to get it nice and coated. And then I'm going to want to go ahead and put in, sorry, my sous chef was doing something. <laughs> um, then I'm going to put some garlic, salt and pepper on it. And um, it comes out really well. I like doing it with the butter, with the coconut oil because it's kind of sweet. And the um, coconut oil is amazing. So that's already done. It's going to be added towards the end. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start. Um, with a roux. I'm going to turn the um, pan on a medium high heat and I'm going to put some butter in there. This is about four tablespoons of butter. It's going to go in the pot and it's going to melt. Once that's all melted, it's going to take a couple minutes here. I'm going to put in some flour. I have three tablespoons of flour here and I'm going to sprinkle that in and I'm going to whisk. So a, a roux is basically butter and flour. And that is going to be your thickening agent um, when you put everything else together for your cheese sauce. So this is basically my macaroni and cheese recipe that I've kind of um, made into my butternut squash casserole. So what I would do with regular macaroni and cheese is I follow the same roux, the same cheese recipe, but instead of using sage, I put in green onions, and instead of using the whole grains that I'm going to use, I just use pasta, like elbow macaroni or fusellini, whatever you guys like. Um, so you can use the same um, recipe. I did kind of stick with the bacon because I like bacon, but if you're a vegetarian, you can omit that part. So the harvest grains that I'm using are from Trader Joe's. It's a harvest grains blend. So this has got quinoa, it's got um, a lot of whole grains in it, it's got couscous, um, orzo, baby garbanzo beans, um, and so there's a whole lot of stuff in there. And to kind of speed that up, I've already cooked that as well. Um, the recipe for this, and I like to cook it in chicken broth. Um, if you are vegetarian, you can do it in vegetable broth. It just gives it a little bit more flavor than just cooking it in water. So this is already cooked. There's a cup of this um, raw in this and cooked with about a cup and a half to a cup and three quarters of chicken broth. So we'll add that also in after we get our sauce. My butter's getting melted here. It's not quite melted yet. I hope you guys are all doing well today on this wonderful Tuesday and staying inside. I think it's still raining today or maybe just scattered showers, uh, but hopefully by the end of the week we'll get to go outside and um, do some more hiking. So some other things that I have that I'm going to put in here um, for flavor is I'm going to put in some whole grain mustard. Um, don't let that scare you. It mellows out in flavor after you get all the cheese in. I'm also going to use two different types of cheeses. I'm going to use baby Swiss and a very sharp cheddar both of which I got from Trader Joe's. This is the baby Swiss cheese. Let's see if you guys can see it. And then um, I like to use the New Zealand grass-fed sharp cheddar, but sharp cheddar, any of them is pretty good. Um, the cheddar is gonna give it the flavor and the Swiss cheese is gonna give it the creaminess. Okay, my butter is just about melted now. So now I'm gonna start adding my flour. You don't wanna dump it all in at once when you roux. You kinda wanna sprinkle it in and make sure that you're whisking at the same time. You don't want it to burn. In fact, I'm gonna turn it down just a hair. 
but you want to get that flower incorporated in there. And when this gets posted to YouTube, which I'll post that, Sean has some um, shots from the top of the pan, so you'll get to see that. I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but um, it's basically thickening up this butter mixture um, that's in with the flour here. And you can see I didn't just dump it all in at once. I made sure that I was getting as much of the fluid together here in the pan. And now I'm going to add in the mustard. It's about two tablespoons of mustard. I'm going to mix that in with my roux. All right, and now I'm going to add in one pint of half and half. Now, some people use whole milk, some people use heavy cream. I use half and half because I, I don't have a huge tolerance for um, cream based things. And I find that half and half actually um, doesn't bother my stomach. Um, and you'll see instead of adding milk, I'm going to add chicken broth in this just so that I don't get too much cream. But you want to add this slowly and make sure you are incorporating it into the roux. You don't want to just dump it in because um, then you can get it so it's lumpy and you don't want anything lumpy. And that's the important thing when you're doing the roux is that it doesn't end up lumpy. And I'm making sure that I'm getting all sides of the pan here, making sure that nothing is staying um, still for too long. Just keep them pouring that in. So I tend to make my macaroni and cheese a little bit more cheesy and less liquidy. You can always add more fluid, whether it's chicken broth or whole milk, um, whatever you choose to put in as your, um, your base. You can always add more if you like yours less cheesy. Um, I like having ooey gooey cheese. If that's not your preference, then just add more milk and less cheese. Because I'm actually putting in about a pound of cheese in this mixture. So this is getting nice and mixed together. Okay, I'm going to turn this back up because I am going to need it to boil for me. And now I'm going to add in my half a cup of chicken broth. And like I said, this is a step where you could put in regular milk. You could put in heavy cream. Um, I just choose, in the, choose to, or you could even use vegetable broth. But like I said, I'm, I'm not as tolerant to the dairy. I'm okay with cheeses, but um, cream and stuff doesn't do well with my stomach so in order for me to eat this I got to kind of cut it down okay that's all incorporated in there now that this is all together I'm going to add one medium chopped onion and this is pretty big onion so I'm gonna use about three quarters of it don't worry if you don't like onions this is gonna boil down and it's gonna be cooked so you're not going to have a whole bunch of chunky onions in there. Um, you can make them as fine as you want. Getting that all mixed up in there. I'm also going to add um, two cloves of garlic. And a bay leaf. And I want this to come to a boil. So let's see how quickly we can get this to come to a boil. All right, let me check and make sure that I have everything in there. Okay, I'm going to put my seasonings in, my paprika and my salt and pepper. Sorry, you guys, I haven't done this one from memory for a while. So I'm putting in, I believe, about a teaspoon of paprika and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then my secret recipe, nutmeg. I know that sounds really weird, you guys, but seriously, it makes a huge difference. So I'm just gonna put a few dashes of that in. 
right, I'm going to mix that stuff up. You can use the smoked paprika. That's fine. Um, it actually probably tastes better with the sage. Um, so when I do my macaroni and cheese, I said I use green onions. Um, I use sage in this recipe because sage and butternut squash go so well together. They, they're a highly complementary of each other. So this is coming to a boil. We'll talk a little bit about um, wine. So what kind of wine can you serve with this? This is a creamy, cheesy sauce. So you could do a white wine. Um, you could do a light red, like a Pinot. Um, today, I am going to have um, Corbel, and this is a uh, bubbly rosé, fruit rosé. So you could pretty much, you could do any light wine with this. And um, you could, if you, you can serve it with anything. Since this is so, um, a little more fattening and decadent. I don't tend to make this all the time. I usually make it at Christmas or Thanksgiving for my family because um, it's nice that I can cook it and it stays warm and it can be eaten warm instead of like bubbling hot. So I'm just going to let this um, simmer a little bit. It's coming. It's almost ah. simmering. Patches wanted to be part of the party. I can hear it. It's almost ready to simmer. So um, we're going to let that simmer. And what is, what's going to happen and is once that starts boiling, it's going to start thickening up. Um, so the flour in the roux that you made is going to start um, changing itself chemically, and it's going to start thickening up the mixture. That's why you want to get it to boil. So once that's done, and this should be, it says it's going to take about 10 minutes. So you guys get to listen to me talk for about 10 minutes. But sometimes it thickens up a little bit faster, mostly because I don't have as much fluid in there. But it's, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it's steaming. So it's getting ready to boil. Um, once this starts to boil, then we're going to add in um, our egg. We're going to temper the egg. So does anyone know why you temper the egg? Basically, you don't want to have a boiled egg in there. So you're going to put some of your hot liquid in with the egg, mix it up so that it's warm before you add it. That way it incorporates into your mixture. So we'll do that. Yep, we're starting to boil now. And so you don't want to leave it too still. Once it starts boiling, you kind of want to mix it up a little bit. I'll let you know when it starts to look like it's thickening up. And that bay leaf, you're probably going to have to like dish it, pull it out of there before you put the cheese in. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to get out of there. But the bay leaf does give some flavor, so it's great to put it in there. And the one thing I didn't put in was a little bit of pepper, so I think I'm going to add that now. And if you've done any cooking demos with me before, I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to um, spicy things, so I don't put a whole lot in. If you like pepper, by all means, please put more in. So right now I can smell the onions, I can smell the mustard. And in the end, I'm going to fold everything together in a casserole dish. While we're waiting for this, I'm going to go ahead and toast the breadcrumbs. So I have a small skillet here. And I'm, I have about two tablespoons of butter that I'm going to go ahead and melt in there. And that's going to take a minute. Once that gets melted, then I'm going to um, take my breadcrumbs, which I believe was three quarters of a cup, and I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to toast them. And um, it, you want to toast them before you put them in. It helps, especially if, because uh, everything you're putting in the oven when you put it in the oven is basically cooked. So really, you're just trying to get it um, bubbly and warm. All right, this is boiling. I'm going to turn it down a little so it doesn't burn. 
Now I can feel it starting to thicken up. But see, that's why you didn't need to worry about the onions because we're essentially boiling the onions. So they're gonna soften up too. My butter's starting to melt here. And once I get it all melted in this pan, I'm gonna throw those breadcrumbs in and brown them up. So the bacon, um, there's a couple things you can do with the bacon. You can bake it on a cookie sheet in the oven to crisp it up. You can fry it in a pan, you can do it in the microwave, but whatever you choose to do, um, you're just gonna go ahead and crumble it or cut it with a pair of kitchen sears. That's what we do, we like using um, kitchen um, scissors on a lot of our um, stuff that we need to cut up like green onions it works well with, bacon when you need it crumbled. Um, we're gonna fold that in towards the end. And it looks like I'm getting pretty close here. All right. So I'm gonna put my breadcrumbs in. I'm gonna mix them up. Once I get that butter all incorporated in there, I'm gonna just let them chill out a little bit. I'm gonna turn the burner down a little. All right, this is really starting to thicken up. I can feel it. It gives some resistance while I'm trying to stir. Could you give me a spoon, please? Now I'm gonna incorporate some of this um, in here um, to temper the egg. Remember I talked about tempering the egg? I'm going to take some of this boiling liquid. I'm going to put it in with the egg, like two spoonfuls. And then I'm going to break the yolk a little bit. Get that really incorporated in there so it doesn't cook the egg the minute it hits the hot liquid. And then I'm going to pour it in and mix it in. Okay. This is looking really good. I'm gonna move my breadcrumbs around a little bit. I can hear them sizzling. Pat those things down a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna find my bay leaf in here. Pull that out so I don't have to look for it later. All right, so when you're ready to put the cheese in, I totally recommend you just turning the heat off. You don't need to burn the cheese or um, make a bigger mess than what you already got. So, Sean, can I have the Swiss cheese, please? I like to top mine with the cheddar because I'm not a big Swiss cheese fan, but you can mix both. You're only going to put about uh, three quarters of the cheese into the cheese mixture because the rest of it's going to go on top. So I'm going to put most of the Swiss in here. I'm going to leave a little bit for the top. I'm going to mix this in. I'm going to let it melt. Okay, the other cheese, Sean. And that's all melted in there right now. And now this is the cheddar. My sous chef freshly grated all this for me this morning. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra cheddar for the top. There we go. All right, I'm gonna whisk this in. And now it's starting to look like a cheesy goodnessness. Apparently there's someone passing by out front, so the dogs decided they're going to let us know. All right, so this is nice and incorporated. The next thing that I'm going to fold in actually I'm going to finish with my breadcrumbs are nice and toasty. You see that? And I'm gonna hold on to this for the end.
So I have a baking dish that I'm going to spray with coconut oil. And unfortunately, I have the stove top on on both sides. So. so I noticed when I use um, the spraying coconut oil, if it's really cold in the house, sometimes it gets kind of um, caught on the front. If you take the nozzle off or run it under hot water, it'll clear it up for you because it'll liquefy everything again. So I spray that. I'm going to go ahead. And I think this dish is going to be too small, Sean. Let's use the bigger one. Ah, uh, voila, a bigger dish. I'm going to go ahead and spray this one. I was looking at the amount of cheese sauce in there. I said, no, that's probably going to be not enough. So now I had one out. Oh, can you give me the one that's in there? Okay, I'm putting the whole grain mixture in here. This has already been cooked. Um, it's been sitting for a couple minutes, so I'm just going to break it apart a little bit. I'll move this over here so you can see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my butternut squash in. And this doesn't really have to be, I mean, it can be room temperature. It's fine because you're going to put it in the oven anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and incorporate that a little bit. All right. And the last piece is I'm going to put the cheese sauce in. So this is going to go on top. Mmm, yummy goodness. No. <clears throat> okay, we're going to just incorporate it in. My dogs are very talkative today. I'm not sure why. And you can see as it's getting cooler, the cheese is starting to get all gooey. It's great. And you can put more of the filling in. Um, you can put more of the grains in. Um, my family likes it really cheesy, so this is the way I make it. So whatever works for you. So then I'm going to take my bacon and I'm going to sprinkle it in here. I left a little bit for the top. I'm going to go ahead and fold that in. I'm also going to fold in some sage. So we've chopped up some sage. I'm going to use I'm going to save a little bit for the top. Okay, so I have everything incorporated in here. And the last thing I'm going to put on top, which I'm going to grab real quick, are my breadcrumbs. So those are going to be kind of just sprinkled over the top. And if you don't use all of them, that's okay. Um, I use panko because that's what I have in the cabinet. You can use regular breadcrumbs too. Okay. All of that is done. And then just to add some color, I like to put a little bit of bacon on top. And the rest of my sage on top. Um, you can also do another layer of cheese underneath that. I did save some, but since this was so cheesy, I decided not to put it on top this time. Um, if you do more liquidy, then putting some of that cheese on top will just give you that cheesy flavor as you open it up. So what I'm going to do is, is you can uh, cover it um, for about 20 minutes with foil, or if you have a lid, this pan actually has a lid. 
or the, excuse me, this dish has a lid. So I would put the lid on and put it in the oven at uh, 350 for about 20 minutes. In the last five minutes or so, I'm gonna take the lid off so that the breadcrumbs can actually crisp a little bit. It should be um, bubbly. Remember, everything inside's already cooked, so really you're just incorporating everything. If you only wanna, if you have, if you're short on time and you can get it heated up in 15 minutes, you can do that too. Um, this is great, you can put it in the microwave for a couple minutes um, if you're reheating it. So. This is my butternut casserole recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Great. So now it's been in here for about 20 minutes, about 10 minutes with the top off, and see how it's nice and brown? See how it's bubbling around the outside? That's what you want. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to let it rest for a couple minutes, and then you can serve it. Bon appétit.